the application of the large distractor in the case of a comminuted fracture of the femur. In this exercise, a femoral fracture will be reduced using the large distractor prior to possible plating. The distractor is first assembled. There are two different lengths of threaded rods. For this exercise on the femur, the longer is more appropriate. A knurled nut is screwed onto the end of the threaded rod in which there is a transverse hole. The double joint is mounted on the same end of the threaded rod, whereby the slot in the double joint is aligned over the transverse hole in the threaded rod. To prevent rotation of the double joint, insert the clasp through the transverse hole in the threaded rod. A holding sleeve is mounted on the double joint. There are long and short holding sleeves. In this exercise, we will be using the longer sleeve. It is mounted on the double joint and secured with a nut with spring washer. A second knurled nut is screwed from the opposite end onto the threaded rod. The sliding carriage is mounted. and secured with a third knurled nut. We mount a long holding sleeve on the sliding carriage and secure with a nut with spring washer. All joints are fixed in the neutral position. There are black markings on each joint to indicate the neutral position. Having the distractor in this position facilitates both handling and application. The distractor is attached to the femur by two shunt screws, one in the proximal and one in the distal main fragment. The screws are inserted close to the joint on the lateral side and perpendicular to the longitudinal axis of the femur. The holding sleeve of the double joint is slid over the proximal shunt screw and secured with the wing screw. The sleeve must rest on the bone so that the bending load on the screw is reduced to a minimum. In order to slide the holding sleeve over the distal shunt screw, all the joints of the distractor have to be loosened. The position is secured by the wing screw. We will now adjust the distractor to lie parallel to the longitudinal axis of the femur and then tighten the joints of the double joint. Since the following manipulations exert force on the distractor, the joint nuts must be tightened with the pin wrench. To position the distal main fragment relative to the proximal fragment, the universal chuck with T-handle may be used. The joint on the sliding carriage must be tightened before the fragments can be distracted by means of the knurled nut and the threaded rod. Distracting the fracture causes the soft tissue cover to narrow. This plays a significant role in the reduction of the fracture. Since considerable force may be required, the pin wrench is used. The sliding carriage is secured with the third knurled nut. In optimal application, the distractor will be parallel to the longitudinal axis of the femur in both planes. The aim of the fracture reduction is the correct alignment of the main fragments and the correction of the length and rotation of the femur. On this model, we demonstrate the corrective options offered by the distractor. The knurled nuts permit the sliding carriage to be adjusted lengthwise along the threaded rod, thus distracting or compressing the fracture. If the joint on the sliding carriage is loosened, the segment can be moved around the joint axis.
The same is true of the double joint around which the other segment can be rotated. Complete three-dimensional reduction can only be achieved if the shunt screws are inserted at 90 degrees to each other. This type of assembly is most appropriate when applying the distractor in an intramedullary nailing procedure. The AP screw is inserted using a special aiming device on the medial side of the intramedullary nail. On this model, we see that the fracture can be manipulated in two planes. This is required when an intramedullary nail has to be inserted through the fracture site. 